CP. Are you serious? He's gone. Fanny, Fanny, Thomas all the way. Touchdown Redskins, 64 yards. 26 minutes. <laughs> he's pretty sharp, you know. He'll coach you up on the, the Miami guys and everything else. He's kind of he's kind of fun to be around. Got an opinion too. You know, I've been blessed to uh, have the opportunity to go out and be myself and say the things that I say. And you know, for the outside world, they can deal with it how they deal with it. 26 minutes with Clinton Portis, CP. Teach him something. Welcome to 26 minutes. You see it. I know you see it. If you're looking. Uh, you definitely see our guest right now, the one and only Dwayne Haskins, the talk of the town. I'm CP, joined by Monica McNutt. As usual, we have some fire coming for you today on 26 Minutes. And we're going to get right to it. Monica. I, I'm starting things off. Hey, Dwayne. Take welcome to the show. How you doing? All right. So, um... See, Let's, I figure you're going to start off light. I was about to say. And then I can I, come in, I knew I can that's come in with these gut punches. Like, <laughs> I knew Vegas. that's what you were thinking. All right, so, so far this year, we had your fellow Ohio State brother and Terry on the pod. Yeah. So yeah. Fire just, to the show. Ter- Terry was love. So we're going to hit you with the rapid fire, real light, before CP take it, you know, to a different place. All right. All right. Let's see what we got here. Favorite food? Favorite food? Uh, chicken Alfredo. Okay. Does it matter who makes it? Mama has to make the chicken off right now. Okay, <laughs> copy that, copy that. Yeah. What's on repeat on your playlist right now? Music-wise? I mean, you can uh, give me a movie, too, if you're watching movies more than once, but whatever. Uh, Music-wise, um, I always got some 90s R&B on my playlist. Come on, um, we need names. Hey, you you're doing like that. You we was, need. Like, he does, like, right? like you could have been a part of Jodeci. Like Jodeci, you, you new and Dallin and Devontae would have been Jackson. arguing about who sing first, who going to do Sean, the first spin. You know, hey, I, I got an old soul. That, um, J. Cole, my favorite rapper. He's on my playlist okay. a lot. You know, like little, that? Little Baby, the Baby, all them the Baby, all them dudes. Okay, <laughs> okay. My playlist. So, you know, one local to another, having grown up in this area. Oh, I can't forget the Wale and Shy Glizzy. I was just about to ask you that. And Fat Trail and all that. Guys neither, yeah. So we, you're with Go Go, yes? Because Darius tried to play me when I asked about Go Go. From the show. Louisiana, though. But exactly, like yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> glizzy, Glizzy music actually yeah. goes. Glizzy music actually goes hard, right? Yeah, if you like it's relatable. Sit down it's relatable. And listen to Shy Glizzy. Some of the stuff he's really underrated. Yeah, I like um, it, yeah. Knowing Wale, you know, growing with Wale, he makes good music. For a thinker, like if you're an avid if thinker, you've grown if you're with someone him too, yeah. who's like kind of on chill mode, and yeah, I need you know, that. like I love uh, the new song he has out. You yeah, know, a what bunch mean? of a bunch of them out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like I just want to be on chill. Like yeah, I love that song. I'm, that's but, what I'm saying. You've grown with him. But hold on one second. A couple more before we get into football. All right, all right, all right. First thing that you purchased once you became a professional athlete. First thing I purchased was my mama house. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Is it here? Yeah, it's in Maryland. Mm. Okay. Mm. Is she going to be on Real Housewives of Potomac or what? No. No. Maybe, no, maybe not. Nah. Just, what? I was asking him. We're not yeah, able to, I'm we're answering not for him. <laughs> Don't allow your mom. Potomac with it. Yeah. 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 They, they moved to Clarksburg, so they out there. All right, cool. And then the last one, your dream vacation destination now that you have the means to go. Santorini, Greece. Ah, okay. I'm Come going on. soon. You will hey. stop leaving me when you go places. But whatever. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. That's what your date nights are for. <laughs> As we begin to discuss, so yeah. this pod, we we were gonna talk dating. If you didn't come in, uh, I, need to, Stevie, on the I need to put Stevie. I need to put Stevie and Monica on the hot seat oh, because God. they come in dressed to impress. I come in like I rolled over. I slept in this <laughs> yeah. last night. I, I rolled over through some. On. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. They come in yeah. like. I'm on vibe. Like, okay. hey, Stevie, where you going, Monica? What you got going on at this? Oh, I'm about to go work out. Well, why you got on jeans, Monica? <laughs> why you got on jeans? Let's, if let's, you're let's about move to on to out? Dwayne as a oh, Redskin. Man. Let's move on. So, okay. speaking of of you as a Redskin, right? A lot of hype mm-hmm. coming in. You from coming out of Ohio State in the draft. A uh, couple quarterbacks taken before you. You're actually facing. Um, won this week and Daniel Jones in, in New York finally got his opportunity as a quarterback and you're looking at someone in your draft class. Kyler Murray started opening week. Mm-hmm. Daniel Jones brought electricity back to his fan base. You're sitting on the board waiting just like draft. What does that memory bring you? Oh man, it just, just brings intensity. It brings motivation. It brings a tip of my shoulder and just waiting for that get out there you know waiting for that tap on my shoulder and when I get out there I'm gonna just let it go and have fun most importantly and let everything take care of itself and 
you know, it's crazy. All those guys are playing, not only them two, but Gardner and a few other guys in my class. And I'm happy for all of them. I hope they do well. But, you know, I'm excited to be here and play for the Redskins and do well here. So looking at your career, I, I'm not sure about your high school career. But Shout as out to Bullis. As well, I, I won three conference thought, championships in high school. Come on, let them know, Dwayne. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's I'll, what I was about I'll, to say. I'll lose. High school <laughs> career and college career, yeah. you you didn't lose. Now yeah. all of a sudden you're in a situation with an organization that's waiting to get on the winning side of things, mm -hmm. uh, zero and three currently, and the frustrations that come with that mm -hmm. are what. I mean, uh, of course, you play the game to win, and uh, that's what that's the ultimate goal when you go out there and put the helmet on and. Um, of course, we're not winning right now, but there's always a brighter, brighter days ahead. And, you know, eventually we want to get to that point of winning multiple games and beating tough teams. And that's a, a everything with uh, everybody. is isn't just one individual person you can put losses on. It's a combination of everything. And, you know, as, as we figure this out throughout the season, you know, we're trying to put it together. And uh, hopefully when I get an opportunity to play that I can do it as well and, and win some games and, you know, bring some electricity to the fan base. So, so many people don't understand as a player – uh, especially if you had that competitive bone in your body, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of us have. So when you have that competitive bone in your body and you're sitting waiting, you're on hold, you're up next, yeah. or and you feel so confident in your ability, and it's like, let me go, let me go, mm -hmm. right? Because if anyone that listens to this show know I've been saying it's no need to put you on the field right now mm -hmm. not because of your athleticism not because of the weapons that you possess I just said you know what at this time where it's so much uncertainty going on it's a situation where you're facing tough team after tough team and instead of letting the blame fall on you mm -hmm. allow you to see how this city works allow you to see how this fan base works to get an understanding and a grasp of everything that's going on because as a as a guy who gave his all for this organization, mm -hmm. right, to see a fan base turn on you due to something you had no control over, which for me, it wasn't on the field play. It was off the field conversation to say, hey, this guy is, is not practicing. I hadn't been practicing in a long time, mm -hmm. but on Sunday I was available and on the field. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden my lifestyle switched from – I practice four days a week, and on Sunday it was uh, I might miss this game, and now I'm not playing in this game, or now I'm injured, which was frustrating for me because my formula worked. And on Sunday you couldn't turn on the film and show me anyone that moved faster, that hustled harder, that played harder or tougher than I did. So it w it was like one of those situations that you get upset because I know how I work, mm -hmm. right? So it's a situation you can't control, but at the same time, being a competitor, you're waiting for your chance. Mm -hmm. yeah. How are you dealing with that? Uh, like you said, it's tough, but at the end of the day, um, it's a marathon, not a, not a race. And I always, that's one of my things. Shout out to Nipsey, he's not here no more. But mm -hmm. this, that, 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 uh, that, that mindset, because everybody wants to be caught up into we playing the Giants this week on one against the Giants and whatever the case is with that. And, you know, one game is one game. And my goal for me is I want to play 10, 15 years, win multiple Super Bowls, be a guy that's in conversation for one of the best ever. And everybody like, that's lofty. But that's not lofty for me. So I want to do those things. I'm going to do them. So this is going to be a combination of time, hard work, and effort, and, and putting all that stuff on the table and, you know, going to put a plan together. And um, it's tough right now because you want to play, and you went to college, and you played, and everything like that. But... Um, I think we have a great offense in the case is a great leader. And I love watching him, how he works, how he operates every day in the meetings and, and on the field and, and walk through and stuff like that you can learn from. I mean, I did the same thing in college with JT Barry. He was a great quarterback, great leader. And sure, people might say I was more talented than him, but he won games. And uh, that's something that was very important for me to learn how to do watching him. And, you know, I'm watching Case and his experience in the NFL. And, um, of course, he, he's done a lot of successful things. I want to be able to, to pick the great things that he does and, and try to add it to my game. So, but when you see five turnovers in a game, mm -hmm. right? Because we all have those kind of games. In high school and college, I had um, m multiple games over my career where it just wasn't my day. For whatever reason, no matter how hard I was playing, I fumbled two or three times. And I know, like I know better, you yeah. know. And I, I had the stage against Virginia Tech. And Virginia Tech had the number one defense with Michael Vick and Corey Moore and, and, and all of these guys. Team, yeah. And I went to VTech, bro, and I said I was on fight. I still finished with like 140 yards rushing, mm -hmm. but I probably should have had 300 yards rushing. Yeah. But I fumbled three times in open field. I'm, when it's off to the races, it was like somebody running behind me and just yeah. like popped the ball out or whatnot. 
And it was a learning curve for me. It was one of those games where I look back and says, you know what? I know better. Like mm -hmm. they saw something in my game to go out and, and show me like you're not ready for this stage. So when you look at this situation and Case goes out and have a uncased Keenum like performance because the first two weeks I actually uh, felt like Case had did some pretty good things and mm -hmm. getting a lot of guys involved. Terry being one who was your receiver at Ohio State. Yeah. But when when you see those five <clears throat> turnovers or after every turnover, you're thinking, Here, here's my opportunity. Like, I want some of this action. But at the same time, you're looking at a Bears defense that's unbelievable. Khalil Mack still hasn't been blocked. I still don't think <laughs> we figured out a game plan to stop Mack and the rest of the guys came along. So I'm saying to myself, I don't want to go in when when this game is getting dominated. Like I don't want to go in right now. He definitely to be a part pocket. of that. You should have been like, I twisted my ankle. I can't go in. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, but what? <laughs> just to say, okay, we're looking at we're looking at the TV copy or the the fans calling in after saying, oh, Dwayne looked uninterested or uh, Dwayne should have been on the case. I, it, I think it's funny yeah, too. Man. Where are you going? But how are you feeling? Yeah. How, yeah. How are you dealing with the noise? Because it's a lot no, of noise. In this not thing. dealing not with the, the noise. noise. Yeah. How were you feeling? Doing in this game watching oh, a, a quarterback go out and have five turnovers and you're standing on the sideline. So fans are saying, <laughs> hey, yeah. he's not interested. He's not into the game. I'm asking you on 26 minutes, how were he's you feeling He's feeling like that he's got to trust the process. But go ahead, Dwayne. How are you I mean, feeling? I mean, um, we played Purdue last year at Ohio State and just nothing worked that game. And sometimes you just have games where it's no matter what you do, you just can't get right. And – yeah, eventually, as the game went on, we came back and we didn't had a surge on offense. But not for one second that I you know, question Case or question his capability of how he can play. And of course, those turnovers happen. And sometimes you like, what happens? And you know, stuff happens. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but the biggest thing with, with, with that was just, you know, trying to be supportive of him. But you know, at the same time, you gotta look to your left, the camera to your left, look to the right. Somebody watching you over here, and he's just trying to stay out the way. Cause. I mean, I, that's what I try to do. So um, being interested as much as I can, but then at the same time, not trying to look like I'm trying to undermine him and what he's doing because I, at the end of the day, it's all about a team. It's all about trying to win the game, and, and uh, that's that's the scenario with that. And, I mean, it's tough. Bears is tough. I mean, if someone asked me in, in the summer who I w did not want to see during the season, I said Khalil Mack, and that was yeah. before I even started practicing with the Redskins. Is, so. Well, you avoided <laughs> seeing Khalil Mack. <laughs> is your countenance on the sidelines something that you are actively mindful of because of all the cameras now? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I want to be comfortable and be myself. And it's this position I play where everyone's looking to see my reaction and what I'm doing. And in case those are picked, go right to Dwayne, with how, he, how I react to it. And, you know, sometimes you might catch me squinting. It's because I'm near side. I can't see that oh, far. okay. <laughs> so, and then that hey, one, you should go have yeah. LASIKs. I'm just yeah, telling you that. LASIKs, now. But, uh, you go have LASIKs. Yeah, and then, are they paying for too. this podcast? But go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, that. And then, um, you know, that one, I seen one picture. Someone was like, he looks so disinterested. I'm really watching the defense. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not even looking at, like, you know, whatever we're talking. We talked already, and it's probably something they had to come conversation but I'm looking at the defense so um at the end of the day I'm a team supporter team player and whether the offense is playing defense is playing I just want to be there for my guys so so I had this argument with Chris Cooley right mm -hmm. we were and I thought it was a pretty healthy argument and Chris said I think it's best that Haskins get experience mm -hmm. in this situation and I said I don't <laughs> want Haskins on the field yeah. at all mm -hmm. because I don't want Haskins to become the blame for something he couldn't control. Mm -hmm. And that being if if in the direction that we're heading to give fans an opportunity to say, oh, Haskins is supposed to be the savior, but we started off zero and three or whatever the situation is. We can't look into the future. Mm -hmm. But if you had to come in today and we only got one game left and we finished one and three, and it's like, oh, well, Haskins didn't have a win in – a winning record. Well, actually, you were one and zero, but the team was one and three. So now everyone is upset, and the first word to come out is, "We should draft Tua." So, <laughs> do you feel worried about that situation, whether you get an opportunity or not, or do you have enough confidence to say, "You know what? I'm the future of this organization, and I'll be ready." Yeah, um, you just—it really like it's it's hard to explain how I, how I maneuver and how I operate cuz like I'm so like in the now but at the same time future is is in the plan so um 
of course, I want to play, and that's just me being a competitor. But at the end of the day, my time's coming. Guys, a bigger plan for me than I'll have it for myself. Come on, preacher. So <laughs> I, I'll get. I'll go into Mike. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. Mm-hmm. No, look. But listen, but, so listen, Dwayne. <laughs> yeah. Where does that come from for you? Like, yeah, in, in terms um, of your overall experience being an athlete, how your parents raised you, how you've been coached up. Like, mm-hmm. where does that approach come from? This comes from, like you said, parents, and then like. Um, I mean, I started playing quarterback until I was 10 years old. I was a 10, 10 year old quarterback. I was a third string quarterback in my little league team. Came in, played, threw a touchdown pass. Uh, I was a backup quarterback in college. Quarterback got hurt. I played, won the game against the team of North in the big house. And I mean, like, it's always about being ready for your moment, being prepared to play when you need to play, and never looking back on anything and just always having the right foot forward. And um, of course, I can look at it. if I don't play well, then somebody might be drafted next year at quarterback. Or if I do play well, then I'm going to get too much hype. And it's, it's too much what ifs and thinking about what could possibly happen when you just need to be ready, locked in every day. So that's just how I move. Well, I'm just going to give you locked one piece day. of advice. Oh, if I would have saw you in uh, quarterback didn't work out, mm. I just would have thought you was a lone snapper, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, hey, man. don't say anything ridiculous. Hey, appreciate yeah. you joining the 26 <laughs> Minutes, man, and sharing your uh, story with us. Appreciate you. Come back on anytime. You know, you can tell Charlie, Steve, yeah, Are you going to talk trash to you him the same the, way you talk trash to nah, Terry? No, because he's not in the situation. <laughs> yeah. So, I like, Terry was in a different situation. Okay, you rank our guests. We're not even talking about – on Still, the field. because of the conversation we're having, this, sorry, with, welcome rookie. Because <laughs> of the conversation we're having with Haskins, it's a little like, bit more. he really yeah. doesn't have control. Okay. But we're gonna bring him back on because right. we got to get to Simba. It's so much we missed on this pod, but he got to go. So we're gonna have you back on okay. when you can speak freely <laughs> after you go out and throw three or four touchdowns whenever that comes. Yes, uh-huh. Then we're gonna have you back on. Uh, and, and get the fun, you know, just so people can see the personality. But right now, man, stay focused and good luck to you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, guys, it's Monica and Clinton of 26 Minutes with Clinton Porter. Say what's up, dude. Hello. All right. One of our favorite things to do is play games from the Virginia Lottery, and they introduced a new game. It's called Print and Play Rolling Jackpot. It's a Virginia-only instant win game, and it has a starting jackpot of $50,000. The jackpot increases with each ticket sold until the jackpot is won. There are no play slips to fill out and no waiting for a drawing. Just purchase, play, and check to see if you won. It is so easy. It literally couldn't be easier. A $2 ticket will win you 20% of the jackpot. That's what, ten grand. Can I do math? Yeah, I think so. A $5 ticket will win you 50% of the jackpot, and a $10 ticket can win 100% of the jackpot. For each price point, the odds of winning the top prize are 1 in 240,000. Look for it at your favorite Virginia Lottery retailer. Helping people improve their lives is what should drive business. That's the belief at Coke Industries, which employs more than 65,000 people across America. The team at Coke works together to meet the world's changing needs in transportation, medical care, water filtration, household goods, energy efficient building products, and everyday technologies, all while consuming fewer resources. See the innovations firsthand at kochindustries.com. Welcome back to 26 Minutes! That sounded excited and exhausted at the same time. I know, I was like, I was watching Gladiator. That's how they were talking on Gladiator. (laughs) I was watching Gladiator before I came in. Uh, that was good. Yeah. Segment so, one. okay, you get you get Dwayne's perspective, right? And I know it's hard in his position to sit and wait, sit and wait. We didn't have enough time, but I was just thinking of you know just the conversation of losing for the first time. Yeah. Which this is his first experience in in losing, and I had a quick story. I don't know if it's going to be quick, but I had a story that I wanted to share with um, myself and Sean. Okay. You know, and it was 04 or 05 that we drafted Sean. So it was 05 and Sean T is here. Or did we draft Sean in 04? 2004. I'll check. Good. Can you just continue your story? So it was 2004 and Sean is here. And this is our first time losing. Right in high school, 2003, Sean was drafted. No, I got traded here. And anyways, the year that Sean was drafted to the Washington Redskins, it was our first year. So the season would have been 2004 season. So this was my first time losing. And this was Sean's first time losing. Now, Sean had won a championship in high school and in college. And he played in another. So 
you know, for myself, we got we lost in the game before the state finals in high school, and then I won a championship in college and was just so happened to be a part of one of the greatest teams of all time. So when I get to the NFL, going to the Broncos, they had won a championship, so it was a winning culture. We didn't. We went to the playoffs one year and we missed it one year, but we had a winning record. So coming here for the first time, where I had a losing record, that was my first time ever having a losing record in sports. I was depressed, and that was Sean's first time having a losing record in sports. So I remember we like right around the corner from the park is a Walgreens and that Walgreens had a, a liquor store inside and me and Sean was leaving. It was our bye week and we were both like, didn't know what was going on. Like we don't have the answers. Like how could we be better? We were depressed, you know, and we went in that, in, into that liquor store at Walgreens around the corner from the park and we got us a bottle and Sean was like, man, let's fly to Miami. And we jumped on a flight. We at this time you could take bottle onto the plane. Um, we jumped on a jet blue flight to Fort Lauderdale and I kid you not, we bought the personals for everybody around <laughs> us so no one would be bothering us. And we took this flight and when I say it was the best release probably to this day, you know, when you think back at memories, although it was a depressing time and a dark time, it turned out to be one of the the it, it was probably the pivotal growth in me and Sean relationship, because I think we both had a mutual understanding and respect to say, you know what, we have to get better. And just thinking back to that weekend, like that was a changing point in our lives. That was a changing point in our friendship. Like that was a changing point in us depending on each other or looking forward, like holding each other accountable for everything. And it's crazy because it, it was unplanned. We weren't supposed to fly to Florida. We weren't supposed to go to Walgreens and they had a liquor store. Like we were going to Walgreens for something else. And just so happened they had that section and we like, come on, man, let's get this. And we got it. Do we not pay enough attention to the toll that losing takes on athletes that are accustomed to winning? You don't. I don't think you take pay attention to the toll that losing takes on you, period. Because losing is never as bad as people make it out to be. It's just you have to, in, in sports, in football, you have to endure that loss for an entire week. So people get the opportunity to chime in on your loss for an entire week. And then if you lose two games in a row, that's two weeks of chiming in. If you lose three games in a row, that's three games. It seemed like this team ain't never won a game. But the moment that you win, it cures it all. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that we haven't won. In basketball, you get every other night to go out and play baseball. You get every other night to go out and play. And you figure it's going to change at some point. You know, you look at the Nets. At, in the beginning of the season, no one expected the Nets to get Shout to the playoffs. Shout out to the Nets. Now, all of a sudden, you look at the Nets. I, I think the Nets are a real threat in baseball. Just looking at the starting three pitchers um, with Scherzer and, and Corbin and um, – don't start me lying. Sorry, I'm going to watch now. Anyway, so <laughs> the, the, the three aces for the Nets, they really have a legit. And then when it comes to hitting, everybody, the Nets could put up eight to ten runs in a game. No one wants to face that. But in the beginning of the season, was, you're like, man, rough. this team, for sure. this team, they lost, you know, they lost Bryce Harper. So when you look at the situation, again, in, in football, it seems so long because you got to go an entire week. And you have to endure the scrutiny for an entire week. You have to endure being a laughing stock. And you've lost three consecutive weeks. So when was the last time some positive news yeah. was spoken of this organization? Like, you're going from opening kickoff in week one, where you lose a 17-point lead, to now getting embarrassed on Monday night against the Bears? Okay, let's not let's, – deep breath. Let's not rehash. A couple things on but, the uh, – Hold on. It's not rehashing. It's just what – an athlete got to deal with. No, and like, I, I got as you. an athlete, 100%. you got to deal with all the scrutiny. Like Case Keenum only had one bad game, but you would think he was the worst player on the team. Although he's not, he only had one bad game, and it wasn't much to his control. When guys are flying through like that, what you want me to do? I got to get this ball out of my hand. If I hold it, they but taking it. If I throw it, they picking it off. Particularly though for us where we got so many young guys that we're excited about whether it's Dwayne we've already heard Jonathan go off whether it's Tez the rookies whoever is it especially important that you not accept losing 
if we're going to turn the culture around here. Well, you should never accept losing. I think that's part of having that's that's where you got to get vet. So you don't really have vets in key positions or key voices inside this organization. Now you're going to a young movement and and Jonathan Allen is is kind of the the Face leader of, it, yeah. of that movement. And now you got Terry McLaurin who I think will turn into the leader on offense of that movement. But when when you talk about turning over the reins, you know, you think of of Geis when he's finally healthy and get, gets his opportunity or Haskins being added into the fold. Like you have a young movement, you got a young wave, it's just now finding the right vets to incorporate to show them the right way. So for myself, having Shannon Sharp, having Rod Smith, Al Wilson, Eddie McCaffrey, Brian Greasy, like those guys were leaders. So it was easy to show you how it's supposed to be done. So when 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 I left Denver, like now all of a sudden I'm leaving from a situation where I'm like 12th or 15th in in responsibilities. Yeah, responsibilities leadership. to all of a sudden I'm asked to carry an organization. Right. Like I'm asked to lead. I didn't know I was going to be asked. Like I didn't know the position that I was being put in when I got traded. I was just happy to get the money. But all of a sudden when I get here and I see what's going on, like the dysfunction, and you got a new coach and you got, you know, players that's used to, to spur you and you got players that, that was about the money. Like I wasn't about the money. And then you got players who, like LeVar Aronson, who was a, a hell of a teammate, who was a great teammate, who was – used to winning at Penn State, but he was, like, bigger than life at that time. So now it's being on one accord, like, hey, you know what? Let's change this narrative. You got Chris Samuel, LeVar, myself, Marcus Washington, Sean Springs. You had so many people in the mix that's like, hey, let's get things right. But then you had great leadership because you got Joe Gibbs, yeah. you got Greg Williams, you know, you got guys who, who had won before that took you in kind of – Hey, you know what? We were going to a young wave. You bring in Sean, you bring in Chris Cooley. Now we all got to get on one of course. And I think we had golden opportunity. We just slipped up in Seattle. Hmm. That's that's a really good point in terms of bringing it all together. Now there is one thing we got to discuss on this podcast because as you told Dwayne to his face, you have a way that you see things going. But uh, I think we got to go to the next segment. <laughs> The fantasy football season is right around the corner. And this season, there are more ways to win than ever. Because FanDuel has more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences doing every single game every single week. Never played FanDuel f fantasy football before? Great! Because now users get a $5 bonus with their first deposit. Sign up for FanDuel now and get $20 in total bonus. Just make your first deposit to get started and you'll get an extra $5 in site credit every week for four weeks. Go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel app. Redskins defensive lineman number 93, Jonathan Allen, hates to lose. So he's teaming up with Papa John's and you to help donate to Sasha Bruce Youth Work, helping homeless children in our region every day. Team 93 needs you to make it a winning day for your family and these special children. You'll get a large two-topping pizza and an order of wings for just 20 bucks. And Papa John's will donate 93 cents to Sasha Bruce Youth Work for every single order. Play to eat, play to give, but play to win because nobody wants to lose. I'm trying to meet that boy Clinton Porters, though. They say that boy, they say he's smooth on his feet. I'm trying to teach him something. Teach him something. Teach him something. So, the one segment you wanted to get to on 26 Minutes, myself, Monica McNutt, we're in the house, joined earlier by Dwayne Haskins, who delivered some honest feelings. You know, I thought that was great That's what I want to go back to. From Dwayne, so go back okay. to it, Monica. So, I thought Dwayne made a great point in terms of how he is mindful of his countenance, but for real, half the time, pe what people think they see is not what they're seeing, trying to read his face. You told him that you don't think he belongs on the the field right now. I was honest. You were honest. That's what we do on this pod. The media buzz. What time is it? It's 12.43 on Thursday, September 26th. It's been rumored that Colt could be up if Case is not healthy. You're with Colt being up in case if Case is not healthy. Well, not really because Colt is down because Colt wasn't healthy. But do you want Dwayne on the field? That's what I'm asking you. I really don't. But if it's one of those situations, if, if – Case is not going to be available, then I say put Dwayne on the field if Case is not available. Um, I just don't think Colt gives you – now, it depends on what direction your organization is heading. If you put Colt on the field and he's not healthy 
and something happens to Colt, maybe Colt should be the emergency quarterback in my eyes hmm. because we know he's not healthy. We know he's returning to form. So talent-wise, I don't think Colt has more talent than Dwayne. I don't think Colt has a bigger upside than Dwayne. But I don't think we should risk Colt and lose him, and now all of a sudden all you have is Dwayne. You see what I'm saying? I got you. But so, but what I'm hearing is that you don't want to see Dwayne, period. Well, if he has to go, he has to go. I'm not hearing, rather. You're right. Yeah, that's if, that's if, what I thought you were going to say. If like, he yeah. has to go, then he has to go. And I, told, like, I totally understand that. But if we could avoid, if Case Keenum can play, then... And he might be able to. This is not news. We don't know. But this is just what's been yeah, going so on. So if locally. Case can play, then you allow Case to play. But now if you're in a situation where Dwayne has to step on the field, I'm all for it. I'm just saying don't throw Dwayne on, on the field because you feel like this is savior or this is, Got oh, it. you know what I mean, like the pressure, I'm caving in. Now if it's his turn to, to play due to injury or whatever else, hey, put him on the field. Bet. Okay, so how different do you think the course of your career would have been if – we had social media the way we have it now in terms of all the scrutiny and how quickly you could become a gif of your face on the sideline or whatever. Well, I think I've always been been woke, you know, as, as people would say. I think I've always been woke and I've always been honest. So with social media, to this day, I don't, I don't tweet out crazy stuff on social media. Like, I understand that. That's like posting pictures or anything, like what I'm around, what I'm exposed to, materialistics or being around, you know, like it's just certain stuff. It's not your business. Mm -hmm. So the stuff I post, the content I post, hey, it's vacation, it's family time, it's work. Like, that's what you're going to see. You'll never see me kind of in brag mode. Like, hey, look what I got or let me show you this. You know, that's just not that's just not my character. So for me, I think I, I could have made it through social media. Now, some of the All of your characters would have been viral. You would have been great yeah, for social media. Which would have been dope. But it was nothing wrong with my characters. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have said anything. I wouldn't have had any of those, you know what, this is in my feelings right now. Yeah. Anything I've ever said over my career is how I honestly felt. And you never heard a retraction. You never heard an apology. Hey, this is how I feel. It was the truth, whether you wanted to hear it or not. And I was done with it. I'm not one of those people who say, oh, you know what? I apologize for getting in my feelings or I apologize for feeling this. I don't apologize. This is how I felt. And that's what I spoke on. So therefore, I shared it with you because I'm not holding something in that's going to eat at me. You know, I feel less of a man if something is bothering me and I don't address it. Okay. So if I have a problem with you, like I need to say, you know what, Monica? Let's do this. Like, let's come up with this decision where I address you. Now, if it don't, if we don't handle that and it becomes where I feel as if it's a distraction, now it comes out. But mm -hmm. I tried to talk to you first, although we will never have a problem. Of course not. So, okay. Um, teach them something, right? That's what you're yeah, doing. Teach on them social. something. That's valuable. Um, teach them something. Here's my, you did the fantasy duel, uh, Bill Payne. Should I start Tom Brady versus the Bills or Philip Rivers Versus the Dolphins, right? Philip Rivers. Rivers. That's a no-brainer, right? I just so just I got checking. Tom Brady in my league, and I just benched him because the Bills have a pretty tough defense, and I, I'm starting Aaron Rodgers. So okay. and I think they play he's tonight. playing the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, he's playing the Eagles tonight, and I know the Eagles are banged up up front. Their secondary is really not that good, so I'm taking my chances with Aaron Rodgers. Oh boy, Week Four, here we go. Um, key to our matchup. In New York, MetLife? So, no Saquon Barkley. Um, a lot of excitement about Daniel Jones. Same thing we had last week. You you got to pressure this guy into bad decisions. You can't you can't allow him to sit back because you know he's mobile. He's already showed you he's mobile. Total different from Eli Manning. So, you got to you gotta shoot the lanes. Bring the pressure in front of him and try to force him into quick decisions Quick, bad decisions, all right? Like, don't allow him to sit and be able to pick you apart and be able to move the chains with his legs and athleticism and then throw the ball over your head from extending plays. You got to get him on the ground. And uh, you don't have the worry of Saquon Barkley. And defensively, the Giants gave everybody away. They, get, they sent Eli – I mean, they sent Landon Collins. They got rid of uh, Olivier Vernon. Like, everybody gone. But here's my thing. That sounds simple, right? 
talking is one thing, doing is another. You've also said on this pod how the Giants tend to run into some sort of momentum right before they we go They did it last week. They definitely did it last week. I think if you go two weeks ago, the Giants, the, the, everything was about to start. They made a move that everyone is like, oh, okay, 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 let's see what this guy can do. And this guy goes out and saves the game and wins the game for you. Now all the excitement in the world. Like it, you would think instead of the Giants being one and two, they're two and one getting ready to face the – Chill you know, out, chill so out. A, <laughs> the difference a week can make. Do you see what I'm saying? So, so the difference the week can make for us. Come on. Get Ooh. a win, yes. and then you're back tied with the Giants at one and three in your division. You, you're you one and two in the division uh, as far as wins and losses, and everyone else still has to play each other. So you could easily get to two and two in your division. If you get to two and two in the division, that means someone else got a loss in the division, and they still have to play each other. So, you know, things are not as bad as – the media makes it out to be, or we even might make it out to be. <laughs> so just so get bad. that one win. Get get one win. Because one win. this win kind of counts for two. It counts as your first win, and it counts as a divisional win. So you set the Giants back, and you got to win. Come on. One win. Teach them something. Teach preach them to something. them. Everything <laughs> all in one episode of 26 Minutes. Episode 55 is in the books. Monica McNutt, Clinton Portis. Peace out. Hey, keep listening. The voice of the Redskins, Larry Michael, has an update coming from the park. Are uninvited pests ruining your plans? Let PMSI, the pest control partner of the Washington Redskins, handle it for you. Call today for your free inspection, and they'll work around your schedule to provide you the best solution possible to defend your home territory against pests of all kinds, including mold. Visit MyPMSI.com for the game plan to control the pests on your home turf. That's MyPMSI.com. Well, the new football season is almost here, and this team is not going to settle this year. No way. They're focused on being the best. That's why they all went and got Hondas on clearance at the Honda Summer Spectacular event. Because as we all know, if you want to be the best, you, you have, have to drive, drive the best. best. Exactly. Don't settle this football season. Get clearance pricing on a reliable, award-winning Honda like the Accord, Civic, CRV, HRV, Pilot, and more. Don't settle. Get to the Honda Summer Spectacular event at your local Honda dealer today. Locally owned Novak has the most reliable power in the region. And we all know how important being reliable is. Especially with my electricity. Novak provides electricity from multiple renewable sources. Yeah! And will soon include even more solar. That's great! And Novak offers convenient 24-7 online services. I can pay my bill anytime, anywhere. Novak. Power you can trust. If you have atrial fibrillation, you know it can be difficult to treat successfully. And Nova Heart and Vascular Institute in Fairfax is a leader in AFib treatment using specialized technology and expertise. This helps to more precisely target and treat rhythm irregularities that others could miss, helping to restore your heartbeat to normal. Give your heart the benefit of care. Visit anovaheart.org slash AFib to learn more and to find an Innova physician. Innova, join the future of health. It's Larry Michael at Redskins Park with this Redskins Park update. Coming up on Friday, Jay Gruden's final press conference prior to kickoff Sunday, 1 o'clock, Redskins and Giants. Don't forget, Redskins rally in New York City at Dorian's. If you're in the neighborhood in Manhattan, come out and check out our rally, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Dorian's. It's a great spot. Kickoff 1 o'clock on Redskins Radio. Don't forget that. Hail to the Redskins.